Veha made a splash, being known as the first sustainable sneaker, and they have a cult-like fan base that includes some members of the royal family. I personally have always wanted a pair of these, so I asked our writers to figure out what the hell was going on with this company. Today's episode is brought to you by Patreon. Now, right off the bat, my bias here is that I really like these shoes. I don't own any. I wanted to buy some. I came close, but I still really like them. So, but just know that that bias is there. We have writers who wrote the script, so I'm not the only voice participating in this narrative. Just bear that in mind. Now, for some context, you have to understand that Veja was founded in 2004, specifically by two French guys named Sebastian Kopp and François Guirsin Morillon. Morillon, or something. The timing of their launch is significant because of the cultural landscape that was going on at the time. Fast fashion brands like Zara, H&M, and Topshop, all that stuff, had taken over Europe, and they just infiltrated the American market in the 90s. And sustainable fashion was not a buzzword at that time at all. Big companies were just starting to make, you know, some more claims about their sustainable practice, but it was all talk. According to Veja's company story, after auditing a factory in China for a French fashion brand and finding really inhumane living conditions, Sebastian and Francois wanted to create their own brand that did things a little differently. Doesn't that sound so charming and wholesome? It's almost like a PR firm wrote it. According to this story, our dudes decided to base their production in Brazil, where they could partner with factories that apparently protected their workers better. And it was also super convenient because they wanted to source their organic cotton from Brazil, their fair trade rubber from the Amazon, and their leather, which would come from Uruguay. This leather then gets tanned in Brazil without apparently as many hazardous chemicals, but the whole intention was to do everything in a relatively centralized place. But good intentions and a bit of strategy is not the reason why this company has grown into the big thing that it is today. And that, of course, is down to our old friend, Marketing. Hello, old friend. Now you have to understand that in 2005, when they launched, sneaker culture was a big phenomenon, and it still is. The choice to make shoes, I'm sure, was intentional to tap into the kind of hype and cool factor that shoe companies have. Now, shoe companies at the time had a lot of pizzazz, excitement, you know, it was a very hype kind of atmosphere. But Veja didn't have any marketing budget. According to them, other sneaker companies use 70% of their budgets on marketing and only 30% on materials and productions. Our French fellas wanted to see if they could make a sneaker that cost five times more to make, but charge roughly the same price because they weren't paying for as much marketing. And this strategy also had a double benefit because this whole, we're not doing traditional marketing bit, worked perfectly into the sort of indie shoe culture of the time, right? They were cool, you know, they're independent. Their mom gave them as much lunch money as they wanted. And they were willing to do something different, which is what led to their cult following that they have today. But the business savvy does not just stop in the marketing department. In 2020, Veja reported $120 million in sales, likely due to their focus on a direct-to-consumer business model. I don't know why my words got slower there. They were one of the first shoe companies to really innovate in this way to avoid the overhead of brick and mortar locations. And now today you see that that's just pretty well standard practice. So now that we've set the scene, you've got a hot new up and comer with a good idea and a nifty business strategy that is disrupting the industry. And that on its own probably would set you up for success. But there is another important factor going on here. They are very much known for being an upscale streetwear brand. The premium, exclusive, high quality values that the brand embodied worked for a particular kind of shopper that has a little more money to burn than the average folks. While Veja does have whole lines of running shoes that are just recently released in 2019, when you think about trail running, you are not thinking about Veja. You'll see Vejas at a mimosa brunch way before you're gonna see these things on the trail. Mimosas. Treat yourself. Now, when we started researching for this video, our hypothesis was that Vejas are casual everyday sneakers for the upper class, and so far that seems to be kind of true, which makes me feel um not great about liking them so much. 
The thing is, you're not gonna find Vejas at Walmart next to other reasonably priced running shoes from Nike or Adidas. And a pair of Vejas ranges between $150 and $250 USD. The bottom line is you're gonna pay more for Vejas than you would for another everyday kind of shoe. But the idea here is that you're paying for the quality, the sustainable materials, and the fact that the shoes were made in an ethical way. Which has us wondering, are any of those claims actually true? So apparently in the beginning, no one gave a shit about the fact that Vejas used uh, organic cotton in their shoes. And they actually asked them to shut up about it. But there is still a psychological element to the sustainability factor that we like to call the Tesla effect. Buying Vejas allows you to feel good about making a luxury purchase because it's good for the planet as well. Especially at a time when fast fashion and cheaply made products are on the rise, spending money on a high-end sustainable product is a symbol of your values and your education that only money can buy. If you're driving a Tesla, it means that you're a good person. And you have a lot of money, probably. Of course, some consumers do buy Vejas because they actually care about how their stuff is made and they want to support brands that are doing things differently, but we can't ignore the fact that these sneakers are a luxury investment that people make to feel good about themselves, which is kind of, I guess, what I was doing as well. <laughs> Guys, I bought used Vans. That's what I bought instead. And they were $10 and they were on sale. And that was, that was good. I felt really good about it. It doesn't stop me from liking this company though. <sighs> so are they sustainable? The short answer is no, because fundamentally all sneakers are designed to be thrown out and not repaired because of their construction generally. But in the footwear space, they are doing some cool stuff to be less shitty. The footwear world is notoriously bad for people and the planet. An MIT study found that a pair of sneakers typically generates 30 pounds of CO2 emissions, which is unusually high for a product that does not use electricity or require power driving components. So by even just innovating a little bit, they were able to make some easy headway. This is why youngest children are always seemingly the best because their older siblings have gone out and done all of the crazy shit and made all the mistakes and then they come out and just do slightly better than their brothers and sisters did and now they're the hero, they're the best, they're the most popular favorite kid in the whole family. My wife is, is the youngest in her family, I'm just speaking from personal experience. Nike has gone to great lengths to overhaul their image after being outed using forced child labor in their supply chains, and Veja has an emphasis on transparency on their website. They're certified organic, they have a whole vegan section, and they're a registered B Corporation. However, they only have a score of 84.2, which is not great, considering that the bar that they needed to clear was just 80 to begin with. This is what I'm saying, it's the youngest child thing. It's like, oh my god, you did? Just like a regular amount of good stuff. You're the best. Leah, you're, you're just like everybody's favorite little, little favorite. Now you gotta understand, their sustainability and transparency section on their website is a part of their branding. Yes, they don't have a lot of marketing budget, but you gotta understand that that's where their money's going. You could spend a lot of time on their website reading about their materials, their practices, their social projects, all in detail, which is what we'd like to see. They even include a list of material suppliers, contracts with their material producers, how much they pay for their materials each year, and their third-party certifications. And these aren't just little blurbs on their website. When you click the link, it literally downloads a zip folder full of PDFs onto your computer. Now obviously, I don't think a single person has read any of these things who have bought their shoes, but it is a level of transparency and thoroughness that is refreshing to see. Am I justifying this to myself because I want to pair them? I don't know. Now when it comes to materials, which is one of the best ways to tell if a company is actually walking the walk, Vejas has mostly natural materials in their shoes. They use cotton, rubber, leather, and plastic, which is apparently made from recycled water bottles. Although, believe me, Veja is not out there cutting up little plastic water bottles and forming them into shoes. They probably just bought an industrial recycled plastic to make their shoes, which is still better than virgin plastic. Their good on you rating is great, which is higher than a lot of shoe companies out there right now. They got a great in the labor category because their code of conduct covers the fundamental freedom set 
by the United Nations International Labor Organization. Now, if you zoom out a little bit and you look at the company, they're doing a pretty good job. They're paying more for organic and lower impact materials. They're sourcing their materials and labor in one place in Brazil instead of all over the world looking for the lowest cost possible. And their shoes are apparently tougher than most. But people aren't buying these shoes because they want to buy something with organic cotton in it. They want it because they have something that every brand wants. Famous people wearing their stuff in paparazzi photos. Now, of course, I'm half joking here. Beha has a ton of celebrity fans that have been spotted out and about wearing their sneakers, including Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton. I don't know what kind of Royals joke I could make right now because I don't really know anything about the Royals, but comment them down below if you want to make me laugh. And we'll never be but even if you look at what normal people have to say, of course, on Reddit, for the most part, people are overwhelmingly positive when it comes to the quality of these sneakers. But see here, this is the one-two punch. This is the magic combination. Not only do you have to have a universally appealing, high quality product, but you have to have the hype to go around it as well. Like you can have one or the other and your entire company will just fail because if it's overhyped and the product sucks, nobody's gonna buy it. If you have a very good product, but nobody knows about it, it's not gonna sell. So they have just somehow masterfully threaded the needle on those two things. Part of the reason for this, I think, is that there isn't a lot of overly designed stuff in their sneakers, which feels the opposite of what you see from like Nike's or Air Jordan's, which are shoes with a lot of bells and whistles and flashy colors. Of course, over the years, Veja has done limited edition collaborations and with designers and, and you know, released more elaborate designs. But the basic Veja shoes that the brand is known for is a very basic white trainer with a V on the side of it, which anyone can wear, it's unisex. The whole simplistic design and the, you know, like if you know, you know vibe makes wearing Vejas a status symbol that you can flex on your friends. It also feels like a badass move that Vejas aren't seeking you out with in your face ad campaigns and influencer deals. They're waiting for you to come to them. Classic bad boy in every high school movie made in the early 2000s, right? Hey Carter, so I'll see you after school? in your dreams. Okay, so we've come to the end of the video and uh, now we're gonna answer the question, is Levi gonna go buy himself a pair of Vejas? At this point, I don't think I'm gonna buy myself a pair right now because, you know, there's still a shoe that is just meant to be thrown at the trash at the end of their life and uh, they're a little expensive and I just got a pair of $11 Vans from a thrift store and so, you know, my frugal Mennonite roots will not allow me to purchase a new pair of shoes. If I were given a pair of Vejas, I would probably wear them with pride. But buy used if you can. That's what I'm telling myself. Because it's cheaper. And it's better for the planet. Anyway, if you like this video, uh, you got something out of it, share it with your friends, I don't know, or or, or don't. Um, and if you are subscribed, then we'll see, we'll see you next week for another episode. Thanks, bye!